But, you know, when when I hear you talk about this with bioregulatory, with going more on the quantum field sort of side of thing, that excites me because that's kind of looking at medicine as a whole, as Mm -hmm. as that holistic side. And I think functional medicine has done a great job of moving us away from conventional, integrating Mm -hmm. lifestyle nutrition, doing a lot of great things to take us into a more comprehensive Mm -hmm. approach of healing. But it's 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 still to me, there's a lot to go. You could keep going. It's not like functional and stop there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you brought up Jerry Tennant, who, you know, healing voltage is healing and this idea. What do you think? Do you think we're getting there now where functional has kind of hit this this? I think it's gotten quite large and mm-hmm. everyone knows a functional doctor and there's like parsley health everywhere and all these places you can go to that are very functionally based. Do you think we're now at this precipice where it's going to keep moving towards energy, which you found yourself, but I find many doctors still aren't quite grasping? Yeah, I I do. I feel in my heart, you know, I know that our medical system continues to go through a healing crisis and, you know, we can look at that. And I I, I do think that it's going to allow the opening for us to have these conversations with quantum biology and, you know, biophysics and energy medicine more and more. And I applaud the functional medicine movement. I I, I absolutely do. I'm, I'm grateful for them. They did a way better job than my naturopathic profession of moving the needle and getting this conversation, you know, to um, mainstream. And, you know, I I think you see this too, right? Um, The people that often land in our office have done all of that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're still not in a state of health and they're not in a state of um, resolution that they're able to move on with their life, that they're still very much struggling in their physical body. So that, you know, I guess that's my path to continue to inquire about why when you're doing the right things, the best supplements, the best diet, all the best physical things, why are some people not getting better? And so that's been my path to ask those questions. And um, I'm sure you're well aware of uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza and um, that That world um, has been really inspiring for me, especially over the last year. I um, had a patient who I I basically, um, she ended up um, seeing my colleague more, but we were in communication and she was, she was very, very sick. She had mast cell activation syndrome and, you know, we know what that means like very reactive you're constantly in stress and anxiety and fear about your environment because you're so sensitive and you're you're very physically um you know harmed by many substances and so um she you know she was doing her work and doing all the things but she was very much committed to the path and doing the meditations with Joe Dispenza and she said that you know she shared this visualization that she had of eating a chocolate croissant with her young boy in France um, and she's American. And I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to limit anything, but it was like, wow, that's, that's a big, you know, that's a big vision. And she showed us a picture, you know, about a year later of that experience. And so, um, you know, yes, I think what we were doing for her helped, but I think it was that synergy of those, um, you know, the ability to, you know, um, get in that state of coherence on a very um, regular basis, um, you know, have that, um, visualization of your future heal self and kind of drawing that to you. Um, that really was the thing, right? That that synergy got her to that experience. And so that planted in the seed within me. And then, um, you know, with everything going on in the last few years, I um, had the opportunity, I've gone to three events and um, been trying to implement more of the meditations in my life. And I just love how Dr. Dispenza bridges that uh, world of the, um, mystical kind of spiritual with the science, right? And he can have a language. And I think that is the language that we want to bring forth. And um, he says something that really sticks with me. Um, and to uh, change matter with matter takes time. And I, I think we know how to do that, right? Functional medicine knows how to do that. And we stick it out and we get people better, right? But, you know, the average person, if I just do matter to matter, 18 months, two years, mm-hmm. you know, really. Um, and you know, but then he says, when you change the field, 
you can change matter. And so that is the inquiry that I've been in for the last, you know, two years, um, really. And how do I really um, bring in tools and language around what does that mean? And how do we change the field so that we can see these opportunities to accelerate the healing path? And, you know, it, it helps us to think, you know, he talks about the root of pathologies in the field, not in the physical body. And so it takes this whole idea of root cause <laughs> to like this whole other language and um, why, again, I'm staying with this community and staying with this um, path is because, you know, those three events I've been in, when you're in these events, you have these very profound experiences and you meet incredible people and you hear these stories. And I honestly, out of any medical community or conference, I've seen more miracles than, you know, what would be quote miracles than any other community. So it, it has my attention. And, you know, I, um, I really hope in my um, career and in my lifetime that we bring um, a language to this. So, uh, you know, definitely like empower people to really understand this and not make this big leap that they have to like distrust because it's invisible and they don't understand that, okay, this works, but really give people a language around it. And then also integrate this into the clinical model. I am, um, I, you know, I think we have a shared passion on how to bring this into the clinical treatment um, and, you know, really um, from the beginning, empower people with this language and like just as much as we're looking at their vitamin D levels and their co-infections and their mercury levels and their dental stuff, we're like, you know, part of this path is that you're going to feel empowered by the end of it and you're part of the equation and don't ever let me not remind you of that, you know? So, um, so yeah, that, that's, you know, my, um, you know, really my vision and my passion right now. The language is so important, isn't it? And what I've realized when I speak to many doctors, sometimes it is about bridging the gap because a lot of the times what you're, when you're talking about, let's say ancient wisdom, esoteric things, energy, quantum, you lose people. They don't know that language. I was, I've always said, if you try speaking to someone in Chinese, even though it's wonderful information, they don't know Chinese, it goes over the head and you lose them. And they go back to what they're used to, which is English, let's say. And you could say English is the conventional approach of take this pill, you won't have symptoms, end of debt, you're good, right? Or we'll just cut it out. But to bridge that gap is incredibly important. What I've realized is a lot of this kind of advanced science talk is really just what ancients use different words for. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing and be able to bridge that and present it in a way with analogies that connect with people with not something that goes completely over their head is really, really important as we move medicine forward, mm -hmm. because you're right. So much of medicine is in the invisible, is in the things that we can't yet quantify with many of the tools we have in conventional mm -hmm. medicine. So that's really mm -hmm. important. 